H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another session of H2K Infosys. In this particular video, we'll see a practical examples of two-dimensional arrays. And in the last couple of sessions, we were discussing about arrays and we saw the practical examples of single dimensional array. So in this particular uh, session video, we're going to look at two dimensional array and look at the practical analysis of it. So for this, I already have the Eclipse opened. So what I'll do is I'll create a new project called as Java project click on next and give the project name as session 14 click on next button and click on the finish button present out here and we don't want to change the perspective or the theme of the Eclipse IDE and in this particular project called session 14 I'm going to create a new package called as two dimensional Array. and in the corresponding package created I am going to create a class file and I'll call this class file as two dimensional array we will select the main method so that we get the result in the console of Eclipse click on finish button so after that let us see some examples of your two dimensional array out here. So let us create an example one, which is nothing but a two dimensional array of string type. Okay. So first of all, we have to define the syntax of the array. The syntax goes something like this. We have to use the string keyword followed by the variable, let's say str. And a two dimensional array has two pairs of square bracket. So we'll use two pairs of square bracket equal to the keyword new for creating an object of this array. And then followed by the string type. And then we have to define the row size and the column size. The first pair of square bracket will be defined with the row size the second pair of square bracket will be defined with the column size so let's say we have two rows and two columns now up, up front we can say that the element size of this array is 2 multiplied by 2 that is equal to 4 that means the element size of the string array is 4 and that precisely means that there are four cells and these four cells can actually take four data which can be of string type and let, let us understand this particular thing very clearly that if I am defining an array as a string array it can only have data which is of string type I cannot have a string array and put heterogeneous data inside it okay so let's go forward so let's now define data in the first row so the variable str is a string array type so we'll call up the variable and define the data in the first row first column the first row is defined by index number zero first column defined by index number zero and let's say it will have data something known as sam okay this is nothing but the first name Or rather I will call this as name only and then we have to define the data in the first row second column so each row has two columns this is a data for the first row so first we will have two columns so this is the first row first column data and then the other part is your 
first row defined by the index number 0 and second column second will column will have index number 1 which is equal to let's say the age I'll put the age in string format because it's a string array out here this is nothing but the age so this is nothing but the data in the first row similarly like this we can actually create data for the second row remember what is the row size the row size are two so we have to define datas for the rows out here and out here in this particular string array we have two rows okay so data in the second row is as follows the so second row is defined by the index number one and the second row's first column will have index number zero and let this be for example peter and the second row will again have the index number one and the second column will have index number one again so this is the data in the second row second column and let's say the age is 30 out there now how do we get the row size so it, now the, the question is that how do we we'll get the row size uh, through the codes now manually we can see the row size is true and the column size is true but how do we get it with the computer code so to get the row size what we need to do just use sys out that is the system dot out dot print ln command and we can write down the row size is concatenate this with the variable str and if I want to get the row size str dot the length method this is going to give me the row size okay now if we run this particular class file after saving it I'll see that the row size is 2 now how do I know it is working fine or not so what I can do is I can change the row size to 3 for example and run the same code if the row size is 3 that means this is working fine now the row size is 3 so I'll change it back to 2 because this is working fine this is how we get the row size how do we get the column size the column size manually if you see it is it is it is 2 how do we get it through the codes of the computer so to get the column size we need to use the sysout command and I can write down the column size is concatenate this with the variable str which is a string array at index number 0 dot length okay so this is how we get the row size out here this is string str variable which is nothing but the string array at the zeroth index sorry followed by the dot length method this is going to give us the column size dot length method so this is what is going to give us the uh, column size precisely there is some problem so we will see the problem syntax around token delete this particular token so what I will do is that I will again use the CISO statement and sys out and I can write down the column size is concatenate this with str that is the variable which is defined as a string array add index number 0 dot length method this is going to give us the column size now let know we know that the column size is 2 so if we get this particular value as 2 that means this will give us the column size so let us run this particular class file after saving it the column size is 2 now how do I know it is working fine so I'll change the column size to 3 and run the same code again I see the column size is coming as 3 that means this code is working fine and the str at index number 0 dot length always gives us the column size and please take it as a note this is how we get the column size for a two-dimensional array
Now, how do we get the element size? To get the element size through the computer codes. So what we need to do is we need to just use the sysout command and use this particular string. The element size is so what can be the element size? The element size is nothing but str dot length multiplied by str of zero dot length. This is going to give us the element size of this particular array because this will give us the row size multiplied by the column size which is equal to the element size of this particular array. So if we save the file and run it, we'll get the element size as four sorry six now the six is coming because the value of the column size i have defined with three generally the column size should be two that is what i have defined with the data so i will put bring it back to two and after running the class file uh, on saving it we will get the element size as four and that is what is expected because two into two is four now let us look at some other stuff for example, I want to get the data at row 1, column 2. If this is the data that we want to get, then we have to use the sysout command directly. And I can write down data at row 1, column 2 is what we need to do we have to use str that is the variable and define the index number of row number one index number of row number one is zero index number of row or column number two is one remember index number is always one number less than the row size and the column size so the value of str of zero and one is 40 this is the data that i'll get if i run the class file after saving it Okay, similarly, let's say I want to get the data at, let's say, row number 2, column number 2. So, if I want to get that, the same sysout statement, I just have to change the string format. Row number 2, column number 2. Row number 2 is given by index number 1. Column number 2 is given by index number 1. So, the data at this particular cell is 30. So that is the result I should get on running the class file after saving it. And that is what I am getting. Similarly, if I want to get all the data to get all the data from the array. So for this, we have to use the for loop. So this for loop, the outer for loop is for the for the row. And the inner for loop is for the column. Okay. The index number for the row is defined by integer, let's say A. Index number starts with 0. And index number should be less than the length of the row or the size of the row. How do we get the size of the row? str dot length, if you remember it. So this A should be less than str dot length. And then we can increment the index number for the row represented by A++. So if it is that, <clears throat> then we have to traverse. This is a procedure in which first I am going to each row. And then after going to the row, I am traveling through the columns of the row. So the columns of the row is defined by the inner for loop out here. The column is defined by the index number, let's say B. And the index number always starts with 0. And this index number A should be less than str of 0 dot length. Because as we understand, the string of 0th index dot length will give us the column size. So the index number should be less than the column size. And then increment the value of index number for the column. Once we get it, we can get the sysout statement. And this will give us uh, the data, all the data, all the data 
in the array R. We can write down concatenate it with the variable str and the index number for the row is defined by a and the index number for the column is defined by b now what is going to happen let us see that there is some syntax problem so i need to remove this from here and put it out here the second syntax problem is out here b so i need to put a parenthesis and the syntax error should go so what's the problem out here right now so what I can do is I can again write it s y s o u t all the data in the array or concatenate this with str of index number represented by the integer a variable and in index number for the column defined by the integer b variable so this is integer a and integer b and this is b should be less than str of 0 dot length okay so we have a syntax error out here and what is the syntax error b cannot be resolved to a variable okay and that's because of the fact that let us check out the uh, this is the body of the outer for loop this is the body of the inner for loop so where am i getting wrong oh there's a semicolon out here that is why the problem was persisting now let us analyze it by debugging this particular for loop the outer for loop is for the row so let's say the value of a is 0 so 0 is less than the row size the row size is 2 so 0 is less than 2 so it will get inside the inner for loop here it will encounter the inner for loop again the b is nothing but the index number for the column so b is equal to 0 0 is less than 2 this will give us the size of the column and the size of the column is 2 so 0 is less than 2 so what is going to happen at this point of time the value of a is equal to 0 at this point of time the value of b is equal to 0 so the condition becomes true because 0 is less than 2 so what will be put out this value will be put out and that value will be str of 0 and 0 so the value will be equal to uh, sam that is what we have put out here after that let's say after that the index number for the column will be incremented so b will become 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1 so is 1 less than 2 yes so right now the value of b in the memory will be equal to 1 is b less is 1 less than 2 yes so what will be printed out the printing out will happen str of 0 and 1 so the printing will be of 40 after that what is going to happen again there will be incrementation of b2 2 is 2 less than 2 condition becomes false the compiler will get in or terminate the inner for loop and get inside the outer for loop so in this outer for loop first it will increment the value of a2 1 it was 0 earlier now it is 0 plus 1 1 out here so after incrementing the value of a to 1, 1 is checked with the row size. 1 is less than 2, fine. The condition is to get inside the inner for loop. In inner for loop, b will be again 0. And 0 is less than 2. So what will be printed out? Printing out will be of str. The row will be right now 1. Column number will remain as 0. So this value is the value of str of 1 and 0 is equal to peter that is what we have put now after that what is going to happen the value of b will be incremented to 1 1 is less than 2 the condition becomes true again the compiler will get inside the inner for loops body and what will be printed out 
str of 1 and 1 out here and the value of this is equal to 30 that is what we have put as a data inside this row and this column after this the value of b will be incremented to 2 again 2 is less than 2 condition becomes false the compiler will terminate the inner for loop and get outside of the inner for loop that is the outer for loop right now the value of a will become equal to 2 is 2 less than 2 the condition becomes false you get out of the outer for loop also so what i am going to get all these values all the data in the particular array so if i save this class file and run it i am getting all the data so all the data in the array are sam 40 peter 30 okay instead of that i can actually remove this particular string part and only have str of a and b and i will differentiate the answer by giving a ciso statement out here which will differentiate the answer with the star sign if i save the class file and run it this is how you get the data in this particular format okay now i can get i can change the format i can put it in the uh, in the format in which it is to be seen now it is a two dimensional array the first column should have sam the second column should have 40 the first the second row first column should have peter the second row second column should have 30 now it is in a single column all the four data are seen i want to show it row wise and column wise so there are two rows the first column each row will have sam and peter and the second column of each row will have 40 and 30 if i want to have like that what i need to do is this particular stuff so i will just copy this and write i'll write out to get the data in the row column format so what i need to do is that i need to remove this println command because println command will print the data in a new line so once it is basically getting this data so this data will be put in the same row that is row number one after this happens what i need to do is that i'll have to use a blank println command so after it prints out str of 0 and 0 and str of 0 and 1 what is going to happen b will become 2 and 2 is less than 2 it will get out of the inner for loop once it get out it will have a new line printed so the cursor will move to the new line after the cursor move to the new line the a will be incremented to 1 1 will be less than 2 and then the other stuff will happen where i'll get the value of str of 1 of 0 and str of 1 of 1 this will actually get me the data in the row column wise format so what is going to happen i am getting the value so when the this outer for loops actually runs the value of a will be 0 0 is less than str dot length that is row size 0, 0 is less than 2 so it will get the condition becomes true the compiler will move inside the inner for loop here the value of b is 0 0 is less than 2 again that is the column size condition becomes true it get inside the body of the inner for loop here it is a print command not a print and command the print command will let the cursor stay in the same line it will not move the cursor to the next line so right now the value of row is 0 and column will be 0 okay now again the value of b is incremented to 1 so one is less than two condition becomes true the so row will remain zero and column will equal be equal to one index number will increase and this will be printed out after that b will be equal to two two is not less than two the condition becomes false what happens the compiler terminates the inner for loop and after termination it again encounters this line so this will move the cursor to the next line and after that the value of a will be incremented to one one will be less than two the condition becomes true again it goes it gets inside the value of b is 0 b is b is 0 is less than 2 condition becomes true so what will be printed out str of 1 and 0 that will be this value then again the value of b will be incremented to 1 1 is less than 2 fine condition becomes true so what will be printed out 
str of 1 and 1 that is equal to 30 after that the value of b is incremented to 2 2 is not less than the column size that is equal to 2 the condition becomes false the compiler will terminate the inner for loop the cursor will again move to the next line or a new fresh line because of the print and command and then the value of a will be incremented to 2 2 is not less than 2 so this condition becomes false the compiler terminates the outer for loop too so this is how you get the result in a row column manner as you see in a array which is of uh, four element size having two rows and two columns that is what we have written okay so if i save this class file and run it i am getting the data in this particular format now there is no space between that so what we can do is that we can implement a space what we can do is put up a <coughs> concatenation operator out here put this and after this also we can put a dash sign within the string format if i save this class file and run it you will see sam and peter there are two rows two columns the first row has the first name and the age in the first column and second column respectively the second row has the name and the age in the first column and second column respectively this is how you can change the look of the array in the console of eclipse now let's say further analysis i want to basically get the data only from the first row so, so i'll differentiate the answers rather okay so to get all data from the first row how do i know that now how do i do that <clears throat> for ex for that we have to use the for loop again so i'll copy this for loop for reference the changes that i need to do is will be on the conditions so i want to get the data only from the first row so i have to travel through the columns of the first row only okay i did not i need not travel to the second row and the columns of the second row the first row is given by index number zero okay and the the index number should be less than the row size row size is two so what i need to do i have to change it out here if i make a equal to one okay so i can write down i need to change the condition out here a should be less than equal to one what is going to happen this will travel to the zeroth index and the first that means it will travel to the both the rows i just want i just want to travel to the first row and through the columns of the first row so this should be a should be less than one a plus plus and then i need to travel to the columns so this inner loop is for the columns this is fine okay so this is going to show me the data of the first row so what is going to happen let us look at this i'll remove all these things not needed remove this stuff too which is not needed so let us analyze it by debugging this now let's say the value of a initially is equal to zero is zero less than one condition becomes true so right now b is zero is zero less than two because the column size is two zero is less than two so what is going to be printed out str of zero and zero so what is going to be printed out sam fine then the value of b will be incremented to one is one less than two yes so what is going to be printed out str of zero and one so the value of this will be 40. after that the value of b will be incremented to two is two less than two the condition becomes from get out of the inner for loop and move the cursor to the next line that is what the print and command does after that increment the value of a to one is one less than one one is not less than one the condition becomes false it will turn terminate the outer for loop also so what i am going to get i am going to get the results 
from the first row only. This is how we get the result from the first row by just changing, changing this particular condition. So if I save the class file and run it, I'll get the results from the first row. Now let's say I want to get the results or data from the second row. So I'll copy this and paste it out here to get all data from, let's say, the second row. So second row means the second row will have index number 1. And if the index number is equal to 1, 1 cannot be less than 1. The condition becomes false. One, A should be equal to 1. So this is the condition that needs to be given. I will remove these stuff. This was for the earlier for loop to get the data from the first row. This is I am getting the data from the second row right now. now. Right now the value of A is 1. Is 1 equal to 1? The value of 1 is equal to the value of 1? Yes, the condition is true. Right now the value of 1 is 1. The condition is also true. It gets inside the inner for loop. B is 0. Is 0 less than 2? That is the column size. Yes. So what will be printed out? str of 1 and 0 that is equal to Sam sorry Peter and then after the value of B will be so right now the, the earlier value of B was equal to 0 right now after printing out this the value of B will be incremented and the value of B will be incremented to 1 right now is 1 less than 2 yes 1 is less than 2 so what will be printed out str of 1 and 1 out here and the value of this is equal to 30 that is what we had kept and then the value of b will be incremented to 2 again and 2 is not less than 2 so what is going to be the condition is becoming false the compiler will terminate the inner for loop after that it will encounter this print line command this will move the cursor to the next line after that the value of a will be incremented for the outer for loop a becomes 2 is the value of 2 equal to the value of 1? No. The condition becomes false. The compiler will terminate the outer for loop. So in this particular scenario, I am getting the results for the second row out here. So let us run this. I am getting Peter and 30. Similarly, I can get the data for the first column only. Need to get the data for the second column only. So we can do that particular exercise. And like your string array we can also have integer type array or float type of array or double type of array or a character type array or a boolean type of array remember let's understand this particular thing if we define an array as a string type the data should be of string format i cannot have a heterogeneous data in an array which is defined as a string type this completes your example for your two dimensional array hope uh, we are able to understand this and <clears throat> thanks very much. Please give your feedback. Thank you.